What's up guys, Sarah Winstead here, bikini athlete and coach for Pro Physique. Today I have some tips for first time competitors. So this is you, if you're looking ahead maybe to 2023 to do your first competition, be it bikini, figure, physique, any of the you know bodybuilding divisions, this video is gonna be a perfect one for you. Um, and it actually came from one of my Instagram questions from one of my followers. So if you're not following, following me yet, Check out my Instagram. I do post a lot on there as well and some good tips and tricks for competitors too. So let's go ahead and dive right into my top five tips. I'll probably add in a few extra ones in here, but I wanna keep this video relatively short and kind of give you guys a straight skinny for a first time competitor. So um, number one, hiring a coach before you wanna start a contest prep in your improvement season is one of the best pieces of advice I can give to first time competitors because this world can be very, very overwhelming, especially for a first timer. And it can really help to have a coach before you start competition prep to get to know your body, how it responds to different stimuli, know you know your training plan, get you a really on a really solid schedule, get you on a really good plan for macronutrients, calories, learn about your food, learn about your body in this process as well because not only does your coach learn, you learn as well. And it's a great time to get consistency in that improvement season and hire a coach at that time. Make sure you do your research. Talk to multiple coaches. Talk to multiple teams. If a coach won't is not willing to hop on the phone with you before signing up, move on. Like that's a huge red flag. I talk to and the rest of the Pro Physique coaches talk to every single client before they sign up with us. We want to get to know you as a person, get to know more about your goals, your family, your schedule, what's going on in your world, your work, everything like that. And so it becomes more of a great client coach relationship if we get to know each other before prep even starts. Number two, make sure that your overall calorie amount and macronutrients are in a great spot to be able to have calories and wiggle room to take away from multiple times in a contest prep. I've talked to a lot of different clients that are thinking about competing and they've contacted me early enough, but their calories weren't high enough. If you want to use a round estimate, sometimes I'll take, you know, it depends on the person, 15 to 17 times your current body weight is a good calorie amount for you to maintain at for a while before you start contest prep. This gives our met met metabolism more wiggle room because our metabolism is very adaptive over time. We need to have that overall metabolic capacity built up before starting a contest prep. So for example, if you're maintaining your weight on 1500, 1500 calories right now, and you're not like, you know, 85, 90 pounds, then that's not enough to start a contest prep. It just doesn't make sense from a calorie perspective. You even need to be higher than that if you're even that lean as well. Because again, we've got to be able to take away calories slowly over time. You can't just be like, oh, let's go drop down immediately to like poverty macros week one, and then you're going to suffer through the entirety of contest prep. No, that's at least not how I do it as a coach. I like to stair step down calories, losing weight at a reasonable amount every single week or every few weeks to make sure that we are maintaining the most amount of muscle mass possible. Because if you rush the process, you're going to look like crap on stage. At least that's my opinion. Um, also, giving yourself enough time to get there, to get to your first show. The more time you give yourself, the better. And this also goes hand in hand with setting some really positive and good realistic expectations for yourself, talking to your coach beforehand about what the time frame for contest prep would be. I always try to give my clients a really good roadmap and a really good idea of when contest prep might start. Again, everything is amenable and flexible based upon how you're doing, but giving yourself enough time. 12 weeks, 10 weeks is really not usually enough time for a first time competitor because that doesn't give us enough time for weeks where you might get sick. You might have a really bad week at work where you couldn't get all of your macros in, all of your training in. You might have a vacation that we need to plan around and do a diet break in between. Doing things faster is not always better because again, it may not give us the wiggle room that we need to get all the body fat off, to get your posing down, to get your confidence in yourself down as well, and to navigate any hiccups that are going to happen along the way. So I personally, as a coach, really like longer contest preps, at least 16, 20, 24 weeks to give us some more wiggle room because if we're ready early, then we might be able to eat into the show. Then we might be able to test out peak week protocols. It allows us to do even more stuff if we have more time. This is why I don't like first time competitors being absolutely tied to a show date. 
you know, unless you live in a very rural area and you can't travel, then that's definitely a different story. But for the most part, there's a lot of shows around the country in different federations, different divisions, big, small, and what have you. You can definitely travel or drive, but giving yourself maybe a range a time frame and setting realistic expectations goes along here as well because you know everyone wants to win we're all competitive i totally understand that however realisticness between you and your coach may actually be let's get up there and see if you like it because i've had a few people that have come along and been like i love the grind of contest prep i love lifting heavy i love the diet i love challenging myself in that but show day is just not for me and that's okay. You can still live the lifestyle of a bodybuilder, cut down, do photo shoots, do you know whatever you want to as far as that goes, but maybe just not compete. So let's get up there and see if you like it. Because some people get into the lights and they're just like, oh goodness, feel like a, a you know just a person in the middle of Times Square. And it's just like, oh goodness, this is not for me. And that's okay. I like setting those expectations of let's see where we are. Let's evaluate every few weeks, obviously about our time frame, And then, you know, look at the show, look how big or small the show may be. Let's get up there, have some fun, get confident in your stage package and your stage presence, and then enjoy the entire weekend and you place where you place. Let's get the feedback and then let's see and evaluate and go from there. I don't want to put a ton of pressure, especially on my first timers to be like, oh, we got to go out there and win or I'm going to take you to an overall or anything like that. Like, no, that's not, in my opinion, that's not realistic for the vast majority. Obviously, yes, we may have some genetic anomalies in there. And if they come along, that's awesome. And they may progress faster than other people. But for the vast majority of us, let's get up there, see if we like it, enjoy the process, enjoy the weekend, grind real hard, give our best effort, show off all of our hard work, be confident in our posing and our stage presence, and then go from there and have some fun, get the experience, make the friends backstage. Those are all great goals that I feel like are a lot more realistic for first time competitors than be like, oh yeah, we gotta go out there and win. Winning is great, but you're gonna lose a ton more than you win in this sport. Believe me and trust me on that. Um, number four, live the lifestyle. Make sure, well before contest prep, you know, contest prep, yes, could be for some people a great bucket list item if you just want to get up there and have fun. And if it helps you kind of kick off any sort of fit fat loss journey for the very rare people, that could actually work. But I prefer for the majority of my first timers to live the lifestyle of a bodybuilder first. Actually understand what it means to hit your macronutrients, hit your protocols, your water, your sleep, your steps, your cardio, your posing, you know, get all that stuff in and get going on that. That way, when you make the transition, over to contest prep, it's easy like flipping a light switch. It's not this massive overhaul of all these habits that we have to build right now and focus on contest prep and lose weight and we're hungry. It's just a lot for a lot of people to just get right in a short amount of time. So I like living the lifestyle. This goes with having an improvement season, having a building season before you start a contest prep. I'd rather do that and make that transition and build up those habits and being able to problem solve when things go haywire. Like when your food gets taken by TSA, what do you do? Or when you go on a vacation and it doesn't have a refrigerator, but the advertisement said that it did have a fridge what do you do? Getting good at navigating those situations, getting good at navigating being social because I want you to be social on contest prep as well. These are all what I mean by living the lifestyle of a bodybuilder for a while to build up those habits to make the transition into prep a whole lot easier. Prep is still going to be very, very difficult for, you know, especially towards the end, but laying down those habits, hitting your protocols, tracking your food, weighing everything out, navigating being social, all these things shouldn't even be a question for you. It should be like, yep, I got that. Yep, I can do that. Yes, I can do that. And I'm not saying we have to be absolutely perfect in improvement season. No, I'm saying you should have no issue being like, yep, I can hit my protocols. Yes, I know, you know, exactly how to schedule out my meals for the day. You know, I can play that macro Tetris game, play with those portion sizes, work in an untracked meal here or there during improvement season. And that'll make it really easy for me to be like, okay, cool. I know what my body digests well. I know what foods energize me. I know how to time all of my meals out. I know when I get most hungry, when I need the most amount of energy. I have no issue getting all my training sessions in. Like all these things, all these habits should be built up during improvement season and live that lifestyle for quite a while. While, at least a few months, honestly, before you start a contest prep. It's going to set you up for major, major success, especially as that first timer. And then my last one, um, you guys have heard me talk about this a lot, is 
mindset and having a positive mindset and a very positive relationship with food. When we go into contest prep, everything is heightened. You're hungry a lot. You're gonna be hungry. And that mindset around food, if you don't have a positive relationship with it, or at least looking at it as food, food as fuel for your body and nourishment for your body and not being like, I'm macro hoarding and, and having sort of, sort of, sort of binge episodes or over episodes or can't control myself in social situations. If that's the case, then it may not be time yet for you to do contest prep. Not saying never. I'm saying we need to work on those things first because those things only get worse in contest prep. You're gonna be hungry. Your energy stores are gonna be lower. You're gonna feel depleted some of the days. Some of the days you're gonna roll out of bed and being like, I feel like I got no sleep. Like that's the reality of it. Digestion is gonna be off. Sleep quality is gonna be affected. It is an amazing and challenging process, but it's also a, a one that you have to have a positive mindset going into it. You have to want this for you to challenge yourself, have a very strong why that goes along with mindset and very closely tied to it. And, and then it just becomes like, okay, I've got a positive mindset with food, with, with food. Food is fuel for me. And if you have that kind of a mindset, again, it's not gonna be as like, oh God, I don't get this food anymore. Or you have a restrictive mindset or a fixed mindset when it comes to those kinds of things. No, I'd rather you look at it as an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to challenge yourself, an opportunity to change the way and the nature of your body and, and improve your physique and show off your hard work. Those are like more of the positive and growth mindset things that I'd rather you have going into a contest prep that are really Really going to help you be successful because there are going to be a lot of days where you're not motivated to get up in the morning and do your cardio but you've got to roll out of bed feed the floor be like nope I'm going to do it. It's just like, just like that. It does, it's not even a question in your mind. But if you're going into it going, ah, oh, this sucks. Oh, I only get to eat this much food today. Oh, I don't want to go do my weight session. Like then you know, you're going to have a crappy time in contest prep and then everyone around you is not going to have a good time in contest prep because prep is a choice. At the end of the day, please realize that. Prep is something that you choose to do and that you choose to put your body through. And so you are choosing this. So I'd rather look at it from an attitude of gratitude, as it were, and being like, you know what? I want to challenge myself with this. Let's freaking go. Let's grind it out. Let's go. I'm going to be doing this. I'm putting my very, very best effort in every single day to get up on that stage and show off what I can do. Like that's more so like the go getter, like positive, grateful mindset that's going to influence your prep. And then everyone around you is going to be like, wow, she's not complaining. You know, she's over there just eating her food, getting her shit done. And it's not really affecting her. Yeah. She looks a little bit tired. You know, of course it's going to happen, but as long as it's not bleeding over into other like relationships or your work or anything like that, then I do see, you know, that mindset as affecting everything. Because at the end of the day, I've said this a lot, the body follows the mind. So, and then an extra one, a little sixth tip here. I've probably gone over way more than five in this video. Um, go to a show. Go to a show, see the glitzy, sparkly bikini, see the girls in the heels, see the tan, smell the tan, it smells great. <laughs> the boys, not so much, but go to a show, enjoy it, see the people actually in person because the photos you see online on NBC News as well as Instagram, they're really a highlight reel. Posing makes a huge difference. Practice your posing early and often, people. Order your shoes ahead of time, get in them. Um, but go to a show. Go to a show maybe even a year in advance of what you think you might wanna do the following year. See how it's run. Maybe even volunteer at the show. You never know, they may need extra expediters, people to shuffle the people around backstage. That could be a cool thing for you as well. But see the people in person, see how it's run, see the lights, see the glitz, see the glam. And that can even get you even more excited about doing this. And even more excited to be like, yep, that's for me. I want to get up there. I want to do this. I want to, I belong up there and I'm ready to freaking go. So that takes care of this video for today. If you guys have any questions, please feel free. Shoot me an email. I'll put my email address below here, sarah at prophysique.com. I am definitely taking on clients for next year, both lifestyle clients and competitors. But if you want me to dive deeper into any of these competition topics, please do let me know. I've got a whole slew of a schedule going on because we are counting down the weeks to my own contest prep in 2023. So I'm really looking forward to sharing that journey with you guys as well. Like, comment, subscribe, all the things you guys know what to do. So have a great rest of your day.